had always dreamt of moving to Australia, but in 2011, everything changed. Dan had an accident, and that basically blew our whole world into pieces. A year ago, a trial week down under literally took the couple's breath away. Oh my God! Sorry. So 12 months later, has the couple's dream finally become a reality? I don't care where we live, as long as we're together. Over 30 times the size of the UK and with breathtaking beaches, amazing architecture and a rich and diverse culture, Australia has been referred to as the biggest playground in the world. And with a population of just 23 million, there's plenty of space for new arrivals. But for many, the move is far from straightforward. In 2013, after an incredibly challenging few years, Andre and Stan Bond spent a week in Brisbane to see if Australia could really offer them a second chance at life. Today, one year on, we'll discover where in the world the couple now call home. The Bond's original journey to Brisbane in Eastern Australia began with a gruelling 22 and a half hours on a plane. And when they touched down on Aussie soil, the distance from the UK had really hit home. I'm like, oh yes, yeah, this Australia, but actually, oh. Having arrived down under for the first time, the couple were excited about what lay ahead. Just the anticipation to see if it's viable, you know, if it's possible to, uh, to be able to live over there comfortably. I need to make an informed choice of whether or not we can financially live the dream that we want to live. In the UK, Stan, a former motor mechanic, and Andrea, a nurse, were living in Loughborough in Leicestershire. But Andrea was hoping they wouldn't be there much longer. The old dream is kind of my little baby. Um, I've wanted to go since I can remember. She's always said right from the start she wants to go to Australia. We had our five-year plan um, and we were working towards it. But tragedy had struck in 2011 when Stan was involved in a horrific motorbike accident. Six months after we got married, Stan had an accident um, and that basically blew our whole world into pieces. The last thing I kind of remember was the start of September um, 2010, which was when we got married and I barely remember even getting married. Stan had quite a significant brain injury and broke pretty much every bone in his body, literally from his head down to his toes. Stan spent six months in a coma. His loved ones were told to expect the worst, but Andrew and Stan's sister Mel had refused to give up on him. I don't know what gave me the hope. I don't know what gave me the strength. No, I can't believe it. I put my family through. I said, he will come back. I know he will. And I said, I don't believe it and I won't believe it. And uh, he did, you know, and uh, he, he came back to us and uh, we, we've pushed him and motivated him. Against all odds and with his family support, Stan had begun to recover. The only part of my recovery was quite... Um, well, it was painful trying to do the physio, even trying to learn to walk again. Stan can now get himself up, wash, dress, um, tie his own shoelaces, make him eat cups of tea. You know, he's trying to learn to do everything again. Stan's rehabilitation was taking time, but the couple were determined to look towards a happier future. Moving, however, would mean sacrificing relationships with the family and friends who had supported them through their ordeal. The thought of moving without them is really upsetting and heartbreaking. I needed their support more than actually I realised I needed at the time. So it, it meant the world and I'm indebted to them for life. Despite strong emotional ties, Andrew and Stan were desperate to put the past behind them and start afresh in Australia. 
place where Andrea definitely wanted to be and uh, well I just I'm hoping you know that it's going to be good for us. We're literally going to be leaving everything behind to try and start a new life again and start a new chapter, a new book um, so it's literally everything, everything is on the line. Stan and Andrea had been through incredibly tough times, but were determined to see if Australia could offer them the opportunities and lifestyle they were dreaming of. For their trial week, they stayed in a two-bedroom apartment in Brisbane city centre. It was their first taste of Aussie-style living, and first impressions were good. Look at the view. Wow. Oh, my God. Height is not one of my specialities, but you know what? I'll learn to love it. Amazing. 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 Absolutely amazing. Yes. So how were they feeling about their Australian home for the week? If this was what we could afford, I'd suffer in silence. <laughs> we should make a change. <laughs> yeah, big change. Back in the UK, home for Stan and Andrea was a three-bedroom detached house in Loughborough. So what kind of Australian home were they looking for? Just something relatively modern, very simplistic. You don't want people ever looking at them. Two toilets, pretty please. Whether that's two bathrooms or just two toilets, I'm not fussy. We showed the couple three houses based on what they thought they could afford, what they ideally wanted and one in between. First up was a four-bedroom bungalow in the suburb of Springfield Lakes, an up-and-coming area just 35 minutes drive from Brisbane city centre, which could offer good value for money. The garage? That's amazing, there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all right, it's all right. Let's go, you are. Right, just testing. Eggs mechanic Stan had caught sight of the garage from the road, but what did he make of it inside? Beautiful. This is a fine home, baby. It was all looking good, but how did it compare to what they had at home? Our kitchen back home is a little bit bigger, but it's all kind of closed in, so this feels bigger. With four bedrooms and two bathrooms, the house should have ticked all the boxes, but not everything was quite to their taste. Some of the tiles and some of the decor is a little bit... Just the colours. Of yeah, a little bit dated. Luckily, the garden fared better. Love the garden. Love, 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 love the garden. Love the size. Yeah. It was a good note to end on, but was the house within the couple's budget of around £250,000? I don't know. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's actually quite surprising. Yeah. That is a shame. I thought it would be actually over. Yeah, I did. It was an encouraging start for Stan and Andrea, but with two more properties to view, they weren't committing to anything. Staying in Springfield Lakes, property two was on one of the area's most popular streets. With lakes, parks and sporting facilities on the doorstep, it could have been a great base for Stan's rehabilitation. But did it offer the space they wanted? It looks a bit squished. It's got this flat driveway. <laughs> so you won't fall. Best impressions? Not bad. And inside? Yeah. Doesn't look so much so much size in there at all from the front, but yeah. uh, it's actually quite a space in there. The house had the two bathrooms Andrea wanted. Very nice. Good size. Look at the style. Beautiful friendly. I really yeah. like this. Yeah. Look at the design. Yeah. Beautiful. It flows. And I think that's the beauty of this house. It just I think flows. It flows from one to the other. It's brilliant for stand mobility. The property scored well and with four bedrooms, it also had plenty of room for visitors. Really nice. Oh, I'm walking water. I reckon it's going to be way over our budget. But, you know, it's a dream. It's something to work towards. Andrea was already thinking of ways to make it work, but the garden proved a disappointment. It's quite overlooked, actually. 
Yeah. I must admit, I'm not a fan of the garden. You come out to Australia for the outdoor living, and if you don't have much outdoor living space, you're going to be stuck in the house, and it's it's not worth travelling the other side of the world for. He wants to be in a warmer country and then have to stay inside. Nobody. The property had promised so much, but the lack of outside space was a big letdown. Was the price enough to make the couple reconsider? OK, ready? £260,000. You used to be able to get a lot more for your money. And with the current exchange rate and everything else, it makes things a lot tighter. At £10,000 over budget, the house didn't appear to be worth the stretch. Last property of the day was this four bedroom house in Redland Bay, a laid back suburb just over 30 miles southeast of Brisbane. The property promised modern interiors, but would it offer better value for money? We can't afford this. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be the carrot and the stick. Way out there, yeah. They've been shocked by the cost of the properties so far, but this house had an immediate impact. Um, Without words. Yeah. Without words. For the first time, I'm actually. Yeah. Speechless. I can see myself here. Yeah. 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 Definitely. It seemed as if this house could be the one to convince them a move was right. I will take one, please. I would take this in a heartbeat. On, yeah, if we could actually afford this, yeah. we, would we wouldn't even question it. No. We'd just say yes, please. Yes, please. And the best was yet to come. The property had access to facilities that could help Stan's recovery. Oh, my God! Stan, it's uh... Jim! I think this centre has got a tennis court down there. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was an emotional moment as the couple realised just what this could mean for Stan. Just have my access. It'd make his life easier. Well, it's been like, it's been two years since I've, you know, what I've been like. And, uh, you know, what I've had to put through with the family and everybody. But they've all been so supportive. But, uh, you know, every day I train, every day I work, every day I do something. It's because I wouldn't need to convert the house. We, could just, we don't we'll have to pay for gym equipment, we could just... Yeah. Just help him out. He works really hard. He does work really hard to get better. And it'll be just. I feel like an idiot. Sorry. The old one. Yeah, it does. <gasps> when you've had the doctors, and I didn't even think I'd wake up, let alone be able to walk, you know, and use this arm. You know, so everything's been a challenge, but it's, it's been worth it. You know, and, uh, to, you know, to have this opportunity would be amazing. Andrea knew if they could afford a property like this, any move would be life-changing. If I could, I would work. To my bones ache to provide it. With so much resting on it, the pair were reluctant to see how close the property was to their £250,000 budget. Part of me doesn't actually want to know what that says. Really? No. was over budget, but by just £17,000. So depending on job prospects, it could still have been within reach. Maybe it's on <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That 
ไม่ไม่เอามันเอาไปเช่าเช่า It had been an emotional day of house hunting for the bombs. The first property was smaller than they wanted, but they had loved the garden. Property two had more space, but the overlooked garden left them cold. Property three wasn't just a dream house; it offered Stan access to potentially life-changing facilities. So, based on what they'd seen of Australian homes, it is time for us to vote. Did the couple choose property in the UK or Australia? Australia. Australia. Finding a house with a gym that is, you know, an unbelievable, you know, option for us to try. It was literally like we'd won the lottery when we saw the gym, because I just thought of all the things that Stan could do. To progress, and that was really, really special. As the sole earner and with a heart set on a house that could change Stan's life, Andrea was now feeling the pressure to find a job with a decent salary. Back home, she was a deputy sister in the A and E department at Leicester Royal Infirmary. Finding something similar in Australia was pivotal. The job's got to be right, not just from the financial point of view. I mean, that has definitely got to be right. Former mechanic Stan wanted to return to work and had been taking steps to make that happen. I've been told that I can't be a mechanic, so uh, I've thought about um, pushing myself to be a teacher of mechanics. To get an idea of her work prospects and shift patterns, Andrea got a tour of a private hospital by fellow emergency room nurse and expat Dana Brown. What hours do you work? Do 30 hour a week. We have 12 hour shifts here. Um, you can do 8 hour shifts. Stan, meanwhile, met a teacher at a further education college to find out if teaching mechanics was a realistic option. It's really nice being back here because it kind of reminds me of, like, you know, when I was a mechanic. As Stan got reacquainted with the smell of diesel, Andrea met with the hospital's director of learning and development, Donna Bonney, to find out if work existed in Brisbane. And how much she could earn. At the moment, probably wouldn't be as many employer-sponsored um, visas in the big cities. Maybe a better option is to go with a recruitment agency. Given your years of experience, um, you'd be bringing home yeah, an average of eighty-five thousand dollars. This is right up on my wage. Wow, I'm absolutely smacked. <laughs> it was a brilliant result for Andrea. But were Stan's qualifications transferable? To start, you're at least going to need your certificate for foreign training and assessment. At the moment, I'm, you know, classed as disabled. Mm -hmm. um, would that affect uh, me being able to work? Uh, definitely not. There's teachers here already with disabilities and loving it. It's great. How much would you think I'll be able to earn as a teacher? As a fully qualified teacher, I could, should be looking at around eighty-five thousand dollars a year. But yeah, that is really good. Excellent. Yeah. Sounds like something up your alley then. Definitely. Yeah. That was a real incentive for Stan to get back to employment. It had been an encouraging day for the couple, but was that enough to choose work in Australia? Australia. Australia. <laughs> you want to? Cool. Yeah, I do. It's exciting. Nerve wracking. I didn't think I would like it, as you said it. The facilities for training was beyond what I expected, beyond what I had when I was at school. And uh, the wages as well, amazing. And it would make a big difference to us, me working as well. Like Stan and Andrea could earn enough to afford their dream house, but with Stan's rehabilitation a priority, it was important to discover if the Aussie lifestyle would meet their needs. After exploring the city, the couple met Joe, a local physiotherapist, to see if Brisbane could offer Stan the same level of support he had at home. Our life is wrapped. Pushing it around, standing his physio, yeah. getting him back. Yeah. To as good as he's ever going to yeah. get. 
Yeah. And the charity called Headway. Headway. You um, have the same in Australia as well. Oh, do you? Yeah. Well, yeah. They're based at the Gold Coast. We've got excellent, excellent, excellent neuro rehab centres in Australia. It had been an enlightening day, so did the couple believe Australia could give Span the lifestyle he needed? Australia. Australia. So the whole point of that is moving this far away from friends and family is the poor Stan and what a rehabilitation we've got an offer. And just a general lifestyle that Australia could offer both of us. Before Stan's accident, biking had been a real passion for the couple, and it was a hobby they were raring to get back to. Hi Stan, do you want Jason? Hi Jason. The couple met up with a group that rode spider bikes, a three-wheeled bike built for speed and stability, popular with disabled users. Looking at getting back on a bike? Definitely. Good idea. It was a big day for Span, the first time he'd got back on a motorbike since his accident. Seeing Stan on the, on the bike is fantastic. It's an amazing experience to be on a bike again. It made our day. Yeah. Yeah, smile and make your faces. That's what it's about. Yeah. For Span and Andrea, it had been yet another glimpse of the life they could lead down under. The couple had discovered Australia could potentially give them everything they'd ever wanted, and more. But they needed to know if they could actually afford the move. Starting with their weekly food shop, the couple compared the cost of living in Australia versus the UK. Breakfast here was £1.52 worse off. While Andrea was at work in the UK, Stan relied on ready meals, but they didn't come cheap in Brisbane. The seven pound difference. I have to learn to cook. Yeah, you have to. So food were twenty seven pound worse off. Yeah. Per week. With Andrea being the sole earner, any increase in bills could have spelled disaster for a move, especially as they based their calculations on the dream house. This is when it comes down to it, because on our mortgage per month will be £520 worse because it's the Australian property is more expensive than ours. The electricity bill here is a lot higher, it's £133 extra per month. Our total monthly outgoings were £1,000 worse off. But if Andrea found the job she wanted, she could potentially earn almost £30,000 more than at home. So was that enough to deflect the hit? At the end of the month, we are £496 better off. And this is just on your wage? That's just on my wage. That is on Yeah. So had the figures been good enough to swing another vote for Australia? I think it's time for a vote. Are you ready? Right, OK, go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good, me, but it's <laughs> I didn't want to be too predictable. You know, we want to start a family together. You know, I want to progress. You know, I want to get back to work, and uh, it makes it all so very possible. It looked like Australia could deliver the fresh start Andrew and Stan so desperately wanted. But there was one major obstacle still to overcome as they faced leaving the friends and family that had supported them through their darkest times. Are you ready for this? No, let's do it. Hi guys! Hi. How are you doing? Hi there! Hello! Are you having a good time down there? Hello Stan, Andrea. I'm missing you both and I'm wondering um, how are you both getting on? Hello! Hello uh, Auntie Andrea. Andrea, she's a, a I'd say very hard working um, career girl. Um, heart of gold. Is Auntie Andrea nice? Do you like to play with Auntie Andrea? Yes. Well, the accident was horrendous. And um, I know, you know, we didn't think Stan was going to fall through. One day when they were moving him to the uh, brain injury unit and I was holding his hand, 
They thought I said something because it's too much. I just went, don't be scared. I said, I know, I know where you are. It's, it's dark and you're scared. I said, but don't be scared. I said, just come back to us because I said they're giving up on you. And I, I said, I won't give up on you as long as you come back. Andrea, she just found the inner strength and carried on and carried on. And she was determined she wasn't going to lose mm -hmm. Stan. To see him progress from not being able to move their arms, told him he'd never use that arm again, and to be able to use that arm again, move the arm, um, now he's walking again, he's talking good, um, it's just amazing. Touch my heart, he is a legend. I always say he's a legend, but he is a legend. I think if they go, it will have an impact on quite a lot of their family and friends, because I think they, uh, <clears throat> they're loved by everybody, to be honest. I'm sure you'll make the right decision, no matter what that is. Um, you know you're loved, uh, we will miss you both. I want you to do the best for you. If this is what you want to do and this is what you want to be, then go for it. It's just very difficult. You know, she's not just going to be up the road. She's going to be miles away. I just wanted to be happy and stand to be happy. But, you know, I don't want them to go that far away. Okay. Just seeing how much that hurt him, all because I want to move to the other side of the world, and I feel quite selfish for that. Most difficult part was that's the uh, seeing the sister. She's so strong, isn't she? It's just really bad for the accident. I can have all the family and my friends all pulled together, regardless, you know. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to see that they're upset again. I don't think you fully comprehend the impact that you'll have. I don't think you can. You can, because if you did, nobody would ever move. Watching messages from loved ones was a heartbreaking experience for Andrea and Stan, but their week in Australia had given the couple a glimpse of what they could possibly gain. I've been humbled by the whole experience and the fact that I can say, Stan, this is what actually I can offer you. And then that will help you progress and get his dreams as well, because his dreams are just as important as mine. I love Andrea so much, you know, that if she's happy, I'm happy. So did the final turn of the card see Andrea and Stan choose life in the UK or Australia? OK, so we've had a really fantastic time this week in Brisbane. We've experienced some amazing things. We've seen some... Amazing sights, um, but now it's time for our final vote. Are you ready? Oh, yes, I am. Okay. Australia. Australia. This week, uh, wow, it's just blown my mind actually. Um, it's opened my eyes to some new ideas, new things that we could do together. Um, yeah, it's definitely surpassed my expectations. The future's bright and sunny. Future's looking good. Yeah. yeah. With their trial week demonstrating Stan and Andrea could make the fresh start they so badly wanted in Australia, it looked as if the couple were all set to make the move down under for good. So 12 months after we last saw them, where do the couple now call home? It's 2014 and Stan and Andrea are living in... the UK. But this won't be their home for much longer. It turns out Andrea had been convinced the couple would eventually be heading down under just moments after touching down for their trial week. When we landed over in Australia, the first thing that I said to you was, and I was like, feels like I'm home. Getting back on the bike for the first time since his accident was a major step for Stan and helped him see the rich possibilities Australia could offer. Getting back out there, riding again, be amazing. Like a full circle. It really was because that's how the accident happened and now we're back on it it's mm. to its full circle. It was absolutely amazing. It inspired me a hell of a lot and I thought, you know, this 
would be a place I would be happy to live. Determined to make the move a reality, Stan and Andrea pushed ahead and applied for a visa. But they faced an anxious time waiting to see what impact Stan's injuries would have on their application. We had to go into the more medical history and uh, it's not exactly, you know, straightforward now. I ended up going to the chief medical officer at the immigration. So it went to the top board. He was a nervous wait because this, if they said no, that'd be it. Andrea had been able to apply for a sponsored visa because she'd secured work down under, but the role wasn't in the city they'd fallen in love with on their trial week. Finding a job in Brisbane was non-existent. There isn't any. We've had to look at different areas and we've now got a job in Melbourne. So not quite where we wanted to be originally, but, you know, it's... It's a new place, a new challenge. It's meant to be the most, the most livable city in the world. It wasn't quite the area she was hoping for, but it gets us out of there. It was kind of tinged a little bit of sadness, but I was still really excited about the prospect of moving over to Australia. With a job in place, all the couple needed was to secure that all-important visa. It was a nerve-wracking wait. I was quite worried that my problems, you know, my injuries, was going to stop the whole process. After three months, the couple were finally put out of their misery. Every day I'd check my emails. All of a sudden she squealed. Oh, oh, I was so, I was so, and I just, I just thought it was something really bad that happened to her. She'd hurt herself or something. And Sam was like, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong, are you okay? And she was, we got the reason. She was so chill. It's like everything was falling into place. Yeah. And now they can't wait to get going. But yeah, we're going in the month. That's it. We're done. We're down under. To get ready, Andrea's been working around the clock, trying to gain more experience as well as undertaking overtime to fund the move. I'm always at work at the minute to help pay for this little adventure. I've been studying for, to top up to my degree, and part of it is the minor injuries course which will put me on the first rung of the ladder to become an emergency nurse practitioner. It's left her little time for socialising but Andrea feels the long hours working and studying will be worth it in the end. The only person I see is standing that's at night time and in the morning um, but apart from that I'm always heading my book or at work but it'll be worth it and I need to make sure that I can give him the best life I can. The job Andrea secured in Melbourne will mean initially taking a step backwards. I've been working in an A&E department as a registered nurse. It's a step down from what I am at the minute, which is a deputy sister. That's fine. I don't mind doing that. And it's a start. I've also had to take a pay cut because in Brisbane, the wages are a lot better compared to what they are in Melbourne. And about $20,000 difference. We've got to tighten our belt that little bit more for that little bit longer. But Andrew may have some help on the income front down under. Determined to get back into full-time employment, Stan's been undertaking part-time voluntary work at a local garage. They said straight away, yes, we'll take you on. They were quite worried about, you know, my abilities, what I could actually do. But no matter how much somebody asks me, you know, can you do this, can you do that, I'll always have a go. They've got me working on the computers, which has been a big boost for me, like, they allow me to help with uh, doing this service work, doing any kind of maintenance. And Andrea's not the only one that's been poring over the study books. I'm currently doing an IT course, and I'm doing well. The last year has seen Stan's condition continue to improve and he's taken huge steps forward on his road to a full recovery. Over the past year I've, uh, I've done a lot of training to get fitter, to get stronger. My balance has improved, I've been able to walk a lot further, my stability is better. Even using this right arm is, is you know, is, is been a great improvement. I, I haven't got a scooter anymore, electric scooter. I try and walk absolutely everywhere. Only if I'm going long distance do I use a stick. I walk down to the gym uh, myself. It takes me about 40, 45 minutes just to walk down. Then I'll spend over an hour training and then I have to walk back. That is the killer, especially as it's uphill. <laughs> but some more good news means having to trek uphill could soon be a thing of the past. Past your uh, driving assessment? Oh yes, past my driving assessment. Amazing, yeah. So that is going to be a major boost, that one. I'm sick of walking, that boy. <laughs> <laughs> These legs aren't what they used to be. Legs aren't made for walking, eh? Hell no. <laughs> These won't work.
The couple are delighted with the progress Stan's made over the last 12 months. I'm immensely proud of Stan. For him, like little things that he does are massive things for us because we didn't think he'd be able to do those things. Since you've been coming in here, I think it's, uh, you've done really well, it's helped you loads, hasn't it? It's, it's, it's been a great opportunity, yeah. everybody's been commenting, you know, my, my balance has been even my right arm, you know, it's all getting better. The fact that he's continuing to be so motivated, so determined, so focused, it's just, for me, inspiring. I know I can get back to working now, so doing that again now, that has been an amazing achievement, though, so that when I go to Australia, I can prove that I, I am capable of working again. And that will come as a welcome respite for Andrea. Our new five-year plan is he works, I want to take some time off. <laughs> With promising prospects once the couple reach Australia, they're now concentrating on packing up their lives in the UK. We just did a list of, and we just started ticking off this list because I needed to get the visas through, give him a notice, sell a house, do all of our stuff, move out, clean my across, tools. Clean, oh, <laughs> clean his damn tools. He's got so many tools, honest to God. When you, people go, oh, you got much to do, it's like, oh, yeah, Stan's got a toolbox, and people generally think, toolbox? No. And just getting those tools ready has been a massive undertaking for Stan. You think I've been collecting since I was 18 years old. It's a lot of years, that is. I go up at 8 o'clock in the morning, and then I'm in the garage cleaning tools until about, well, I get told about 10 o'clock at night. It's got to be pretty immaculate, you know. It's got to look like brand new before they accept it in Australia. The couple's house has been placed on the market, but they've mixed feelings about leaving their home and some of their possessions behind. So I think if we sell the house, you know, it makes us more determined to do better over there. That house or things that we're just having to chuck you just think, God, it's taken us ages to save that. Or, you know, we've had that since we first moved in together. You're boxing all your life up, aren't you? While Stan and Andrea can't wait to start their new life down under, leaving the friends and family who have supported them through incredibly tough times is a daunting prospect. We've got such a close-knit group of family and friends and it's your safety net, if you like, and then all of a sudden you're leaving that to the unknown. But they've been so supportive regardless. I only have to bring them and just say, I need this, I need that, and then straight away they're there, you know, they do everything they can for me. And as their departure date draws closer, Andrea has occasionally battled with whether the couple have made the right decision. Part of me feels guilty in the fact that I'm pushing this and the fact that I'm ripping him away and we're ripping both of us away from everything that we've ever known and loved and had. She's kind of questioned herself sometimes, you know, is this the right choice? Am I doing the right thing? Well, maybe I shouldn't be so selfish, but it's, it's something that I have to do. But they're determined to plough ahead with emigrating, particularly given all the work Stan's put in. 13 years and you're dragging me halfway around the world. Oh yeah, you look like you're going kicking and screaming and all. Yeah. I've had the war balls. I've, I've gone that I was doing the right thing. You know, I've had the, she will not do it. He's like, no, we're going to Australia. No, I'm not cleaning these tools for nothing. We're going now. And he's the one that's pushing more than I am at the minute. Hey, I didn't clean it for nothing. <laughs> Although it was initially Andrea's idea to start again on the other side of the world, the vision's now very much a shared one and something stands relishing. I know this is her dream. And it's become my dream as well. Stan is also wanting this dream now, whether that's because I've pushed it for so long or whether the fact that um, with the accident he's realised that we have got a new lease of life and he's also wanting to you know, experience new things. I've got to find new life, I've got to find new work, everything out there. And that is where it's, it's going to be mixed emotions, I think. I'm going to grab it with both arms and go for it. Unless you do it, you know, you're always going to regret it. You've got to go for it and, you know, see how it pans out. Yeah. After all the heartache and trauma of the past few years, the Bombs are finally in a position to look to their future with hope and anticipation. It's going to be a great opportunity for a new life for us both. When everything happened and, you know, I just thought, that's it. 
I've lost my husband after six months. What am I going to do now? Um, and the fact that we've got this opportunity, I'm going to take it with both hands, arms, legs, everything I can grip on with it. I will grip. I've come to start my life again. You know, this is a second chance for life, for life for me. It's not been a quick process at all, you know, and uh, the accident has been quite a, a, a speed bump in, in our, you know, in our lives together. So uh, this is, is finally, you know, it's getting forward. It's really getting good now. So overall, how are they feeling about their impending move? Oh, I can't wait. Oh. I don't care where we live, as long as we're together, that is all I'll, you know, care about. Having grasped the opportunity with both hands, Andrea and Stan now look poised to enjoy a very rosy new life on the other side of the world. We wish them a well-deserved happy future together. Helicopter heroes down under at 11.45 this morning, flying to help a biker who's become trapped in a remote ravine. The next on BBC One, a new edition of Homes Under the Hammer.